Hi guys! Okay, so today I'm going to introduce you to the idea of lenses. Uh, and by the time you've finished, you are going to understand how lenses affect light um, and some of the basic uses of them. This is video part one of what will probably end up as three videos, all talking about what lenses are and how they work. So today I'm going to introduce you to the idea of converging and diverging lenses, and we're going to talk about how that ties into refraction and what we've learned there. Uh, so let's dive straight in. So a couple of things uh, that are really key for you to remember at this stage. The first is Snell's Law, and Snell's Law tells us that the refractive index of a material, which is n, is equal to sine of the angle of incidence divided by sine of the angle of refraction. Um, if we think of a block like that, uh, and the normal goes along like that, uh, then when light enters, you have an angle of incidence and an angle of refraction. So that's the angle of refraction, that's the angle of incidence. And I'm going to keep reminding you of this, but for IGCSE, any angle that is inside a material, that is an angle of refraction. Any angle that is outside a material is always an angle of incidence. Now that does change a little bit when we get to A level, we do this a bit more uh, rigorously, but for now that's what you need to know. Okay, um, what is this angle, what, well what causes uh, refraction? You should remember from the previous video, it's caused by a change in the speed of light. Uh, so we can uh, calculate it by doing C. Uh, this is uh, speed of light in a vacuum uh, divided by speed of light in the material. And as a result of this, if you think about the little toy car method, uh, so you drive your toy car into your material and then it bends uh, from whichever side slows down first. So that means that when light enters the material, light will bend towards the normal and when it leaves, light will bend away from the normal. Now why is that important? Well, we this is the, the basic idea of what makes a lens work. Um, and to explain that in a little bit more detail, I have an example of a lens drawn on the screen. So I want you to think about a ray of light coming in like that. And my first question is to, to you is, which way will that ray of light bend? Will it bend up? down, or carry on straight. Well, what we can do is let's start by marking in the normal. If you remember, the normal is always at 90 degrees to the surface. So it's kind of like that. And if you uh, get your little toy car with your fingers and you slide it along uh, your ray or your lens, what you should notice is that your thumb here at the bottom that will enter the block first. That means that your finger up here, that will be outside. So this will be going slowly, this will be going fast. That means that light, our light ray is going to bend towards the normal and do something like this. So now we've got the question of well, what happens at the next point. Will it bend, uh, or which direction will it bend? Again, will it go up? down or continue straight. Well, hopefully again, you thought in your head, let's add in a normal here. Now the interesting thing about the shape of the lens is that because it's curved like that, the normal has actually changed direction. It's not in the same orientation anymore. So normal goes away of drawing it on this diagram. Um, and again, if you do your, sorry, if you do your little toy car uh, pair of fingers, what you'll see is that as it goes along, uh, now your uh, top finger leaves first, your bottom finger is still inside the material, so it's going to bend down this way. Um, and what we're going to then do is exactly the same for over here. Um, I'm not going to get you to pause the video, but what we find is it bends first as it enters, and then it bends even more 
as it leaves. So now we're seeing something that's a bit unusual and a bit different to the uh, refraction that we've done before. What we're seeing is that depending on the position that the light ray enters the lens, it gets refracted and leaves going in a different direction. So we're finding these light rays are just crossing all over the place from the other side. Um, this is a type of so this type of lens, this, this sort of uh, round shape is called a uh, con no Ooh. convex convex lens. Um, there's another type of lens here called a concave lens. Um, now probably uh, if you have a normal glass if you sorry if you wear glasses and you are like most people your age chances are this is the type of lens that you have in your glasses so they actually sort of stick inwards like this making a kind of uh, a, what the shape I've drawn um, so what I want you to think about now is what will the light do as it enters here if I draw for you uh, two light rays going like that, what are they going to do? Um, and hopefully what you should be able to see is, let's draw in our normals again. I'm going to have a normal this time going like that, and this time going like that. Light, as we said, will always bend towards the normal. Um, so that means that it's going to do this. It's going to move outwards. Um, and actually, it's then going to move even more outwards as it leaves. Um, so there are two ways that we often refer to these types of lenses. Uh, we can call them convex and concave. So uh, that's about their shape. Or we can call them converging or diverging. Now, converging means coming together. Diverging means going apart. So hopefully, you're going to be able to match which... One, which shape does which? Which shape does converging? Which shape does diverging? Um, just a couple more uh, bits of lens terminology that we don't actually really need for uh, your IGCSE. Um, well, we don't need the principal axis, but we do need a couple of others for your IGCSE. Um, now, what I've drawn here is several different lines. Um, so they, these are all uh, parallel incident rays entering my lens and all leaving. Now what you see is that all of those points cross at one point together. Now we call that the principal focus or the focal point of the lens. And the other thing that we have then is a length. And the length goes from the dead center of the lens down to the focal point. And we call that the focal length. Now, different lenses have different focal lengths. And it's going to be really important to you when you start to do some uh, other things with lenses that you understand what the idea of focal length is. Um, this is not on your course, but I've just remembered it, and it's quite interesting. Uh, 1 over the focal length is a number that we often call D, um, and D is a kind of strength. Uh, and it's measured in uh, a, n a number called diopters. And if you have a prescription for your lenses, so you, for example, my contact lenses are negative 3.75, uh, that tells you the focal length of your uh, glasses. So the bigger the D, the stronger they are, because the bigger the D, the shorter the focal length. And what we're going to discover later is that stronger lenses have a shorter focal length. You don't need to know that bit, but I just think it's interesting if you do wear glasses. Um, so that's the idea of focal length for a converging lens. But let's just go back and think about our diverging lens here. Um, it's pretty easy to see on this diagram here, the focal length will be that. But what about here on this one? How do we find for this one over here what the focal length is? We're a bit stuck. Well, there's a pretty cool um, little idea that what you can use. And that is ray tracing. So what we can do is, just as we've done with these green dots here, we can trace each of the uh, leaving rays, or each of the rays that have left, back to a point. And what we'll find is, again, each of those rays will all cross at a focal point. 
Um, now, I did talk a little bit about the strength of a length. I just want to talk about it a little bit more here, um, because what you're going to be doing in the lesson now is playing around with some lenses and shining some light on a screen. So if I put a screen in the dotted line here, what you'd actually see when you looked at the screen is three, or uh, well, how many I've got there, four, five bands of light. What we then find for a fat lens is that a fat lens converges the light more. And if you play around with the ideas of uh, double refraction, you should see why. Um, but the important thing to look at here is the effect of thin and fat. So there's a thin, there's a fat. There's a thin, there's a fat. What you should be able to see is that the thin lens uh, converges the light at a longer distance than the fat lens. So the fat lens has a shorter focal length. That's represented on the screen by, uh, if I have a screen at a point, the lines pointing further apart. Now what you're going to do in the lesson is you're actually going to start to measure the focal length of a lens. So what you're going to need to do is take a screen and then move that screen up and down until you get to the focal point. And one of the things I want you to be able to come to do in lessons, and you should be able to explain, is what will this look like over here? at the focal point. Sorry about my appalling handwriting. It's really hard to draw on a screen. So when I actually put this screen at the focal point, what image will appear? And if you can come to lessons with a decent idea of what will happen there, then that means that you definitely understand this introductory stuff about lenses. One last thing I forgot to mention earlier. Um, little memory trick to remember which is a concave and which is a convex. Caves go in. So a concave lens looks like that because there are caves going in on either side. That might just help you to remember it. Thanks for watching um, and I will uh, see you in our lesson.